Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching and it's time for part 8 of my How to Paint Hero Quest series and in this video we're working on the Abomination which has turned out to be one of my favourite little schemes of this series so far. This is a fairly quick paint scheme again about 15 to 20 minutes for each of the models in here mostly contrast paint but starting off like others in the series working on metallics first working on Retributor Armour to give a brass effect to the end uh, of the weapon or the pommel you've seen there and actually onto this kind of odd, it's not really a trident, but kind of aquatic themed weapon they're doing there. And I think that's why brass works quite well for it, making sure it's a really good coverage before we move on to the contrast paint. Now, we're working on the skin here and I wanted to go for kind of a mixed blended green effect. So we're putting down the first of the Militarum green layers and this is all over every last part of the scale models, avoiding you know, the patches you want to leave in terms of the bone and the fins later on and going very carefully around the eyes there because we're going to do that different colour. Now, when this first layer is still wet, we're then taking that second contrast green, working on the Mantis Warriors green, and putting it straight on top of those scales that have already had the first layer of green. And this does a really nice mixed blending effect kind of on the, the scales there. So not quite a wet blending because we're not merging two different colours, but it is merging of the two greens, gives a real nice highlighted effect and is fairly quick. So if you miss a couple of sections, it's not you know the end of the world. Doing the same thing again, being very careful around the eyes and the fins that are coming out of the head not to dig onto that uh, white area there because with contrast paint if you get it on to an area you, you're working on next it can give sort of strange effects so do be careful when you're doing it now you notice i've gone over the webbed area on the hands there with the green but we're putting that gullum and flesh color over those webbed patches again and it's mixing together with the green to give an interesting colored effect then taking that and going around the mouth, so it's the lips and the skin that joins the mouth together. And I was using one size of paintbrush there and it was putting a bit too much paint down. So I've moved to a smaller brush just to carefully do around that mouth because we don't want to go you know, overboard and have it blending in. And that's one thing to watch with contrast. It will naturally flow across the model and that's obviously how it's designed. But you do have to be a bit careful, especially if you're doing like this with a speed paint where the paints are all still going to be fairly wet. If you've got some detailed areas, you might want to move down to a smaller brush, load the brush slightly less so it's not flowing everywhere. Now onto the skeleton uh, hoard colour. So we're working this into the teeth and on that little detail that's on the cloth there. One of the things about these models, they're not super, super detailed. Uh, so that detail on the cloth, it's quite hard to pick out what it even is. But we did pick that out in a different colour and doing the skeleton there. And we're leaving that to dry a bit more whilst moving on to the fins. Now I started the fins and I put the yellow across most of the fins there, but leaving the tips free. And then realised I completely forgot some of the bone spurs that are sticking out of the arm. So move back to that. And that's not a problem because we are going to be doing the fins that are coming out of the back in a very wet blended format but it didn't take long to do those bones and go back to them so the paint didn't have time to dry. Now you've seen there we've put the yellow on probably most of the fin and now we're going with that red and we're putting that on all the tips and then the larger fin at the front covering about half of it. And again this is going on top of already wet paint and you'll see it is beginning to blend together and make some little orangey patches just at the bottom of where that red is touching the yellow. But we're going to go back with a slightly damp brush and we're going to smudge these colours together on there so we really are getting a blend of yellow by the model kind of going orangey pinky uh, halfway up and then with that red on the tips there and just going along all the fin tips and doing that blending it in and then I took a little bit more red because I wanted a bit more definition on that front fin of the red there and that is some super super quick wet blending on those fins and I think it gave a really nice effect one of the things I really liked about this paint scheme was all the kind of ways we're merging these contrast paints together as we're going through because I do do a bit of wet blending about normal painting not something I've done with contrast and contrast I am still experimenting with so it's really fun to do a model like this that really tests the limits of what what you've done so far with the paint. Now working on some details with the red there, around the eyes and onto the starfish on the shoulders. And if you notice, there's some patches of white where we haven't fully covered with the green. So I'm just taking those greens and going back and fixing those white spots on the shoulder and as the fin rises up out of the head there. Taking some snake bite leather and working on the cloth. So there's not a lot of kind of cloth and uh, man-made materials on this model because it is that kind of aquatic feature, which is why I think the green fits quite well on the brass does. And incidentally, if you've been checking out the paints as I'm going, I will do a full list of all the paints at the end, even though they're at the, you know, the top as we're going. So it has been a real good fun little scheme, this one. Again, I said before, they're not super detailed models, these. Uh, I do find that when you start getting paint on it, you will notice details that you didn't see uh, when the 
model was not undercoated. I know it's a weird feature of the plastic this is made out of for some reason. I just couldn't pick certain details out. And I have missed a few mold lines on these models. Even though I did a video on how to prepare them and talked about make sure you get all the mold lines off, I did miss a fair few and that's not normal for myself. You could go back and fix that. I chose not to because of the, the basic nature of these models, but it is a good uh, thing to pay attention to and learn from my mistakes, I suppose. Now moving on to the wood on oh there, as much as I said we've done this model as aquatic and I suppose you wouldn't necessarily have a wood uh, spear uh, sort of handle on the aquatic model, I think it fits uh, into here, I'm just using the wildwood colour onto there, you could do this whole spear in that brass kind of aquatic colour if you wanted but I think it works pretty well. Now doing the base in the same format that we've done with all of the stone in all models, doing that silicone and grey just on the base and onto the sand there for a nice simple basing effect. And that in effect is all the basic colours of the model down. Now I did do this in one batch and one run, so this was about 15 minutes up to this kind of point. Let it thoroughly dry though, and that's what slows the process down a little bit, you know, for a few hours before putting on the wash stage. So we're taking a seraphim sepia wash, and this is going on every single part of the model. Now just be careful that it doesn't pool up too much in areas you don't want it to, so you don't want any big thick chunks of the wash. But then that is it. When that is done, leave it dry. You might want to give it a varnish. I always varnish my models. And here is the completed miniature. You'll see some really nice blended effects across the green. I think it works really well. I'm really impressed with the fin and how that's done. A super quick wet blending. And I do think this model has been my favourite so far. Uh, and I think a really nice colour scheme. You can see it across the top. I was pausing on that mould line across the shoulder. So yeah, one for you to watch on. There is some mould lines on here. And here's the paint that we've used. So hopefully that video, uh, you enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Hopefully I'll see you on the channel for the next video.